Try to get ahead of the news. It's Friday, we're live, and it's time for the last leg. <laughs> Tonight on the show, we watch on as Parliament makes a fist of it. Bite our nails as a bomb is moved in Plymouth, and we'll give a big hand to a big foot. Plus, we'll be joined by comedian Desiree Birch, presenter Jonathan Ross, and musician Sean Ryder. On the show that always points a finger at the news. Welcome to The Last Leg, the show that heard a British museum is opening a Taylor Swift exhibition and thought, well, they are both dramatic histories with their exes. <laughs> with me, as always, with the pride of Dartmoor, Josh Whittacombe, and the runner-up from The Masked Singer, the one and only Bigfoot! <laughs> last week, last week, all we talked about who was who was Bigfoot, so... Let's find out. <laughs> take it off! 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 Take it off. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't be careful with him. Be careful with him. There we go. <laughs> God, it's bloody hot in that. Were you, <laughs> were you surprised when you found out? <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> the fingers never moved and it had my voice. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew it was you. Yeah. But you just lied to us consistently. Even when I said, look, I'm not going to tell anyone. Just tell... I know that you know that I know. You know that I know, right? And you said, look, I can't tell you. Even if I was doing it, which I'm not. But if I was, it would be the kind of show where I imagine you'd have to sign an NDA. <laughs> 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 uh, and I'm going to be honest, I thought your final song was the best. The, the one and only. This is Alex from last week. proudest you've ever been of me. Look at your little face. <laughs> <laughs> you've not been this proud since the very first show at London 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. What a fun thing to do. Yeah, and I love the costume. I love the costume. They, they were worried about... Basically, I got you know, asked about a couple of the other costumes first, like Piranha mm. and stuff like that. And then I said I wanted to be something cute. Right. And they were like, well, we, we don't really have anything. And I kept pressing. They said, look, we've got this one costume, but we didn't want to show it to you in case you got... <laughs> I was like, what, is it going to be a crab or something? Like, what is it? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> then they showed, they showed me Bigfoot. And I was like, so what's the problem with it? And they went, oh, see, he's got, he's got a bad leg, but it's not been designed for you. It just, it just so happens that we thought it'd be funny, Bigfoot with a bad foot. And I was just like, so I reckon I can probably sell being hairy and having a bad leg. I reckon I could probably... <laughs> <laughs> it was just... It. Was it hot in there? Oh, mate, it was... I mean, you see me sweat every week on it. In there, it was absolutely ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. It was so hot. I had, like, four ice packs, <laughs> like, strapped to me. Cos, like, a box of Cornettos need one ice pack. <laughs> <laughs> so you're four times... Colder than a cornetto. That's what you are. And I know you. Yeah. You need to go to a, go for a wee right before every show. Oh, on the phone I had to try. I, tried. I needed a wee, and they were like, "You're gonna." I didn't have time to take all the costume off, but I didn't want to get piss on it. 
<laughs> no, because you're a, you're, a, you're a classy no, guy. I forgot like, about that. It was bad enough that like, we all like, sweated it. I didn't want to ruin it, and I felt mm. like, you know... So I had to try and like, manoeuvre myself around and like, pull it down like a onesie. Honestly, it was... Uh, <laughs> so you yeah, turned with the, the head on? Was that with the, yeah, with the head on. <laughs> I like the it's idea of... The most obscure sit-down wee of all time. <laughs> so did someone see you coming out of the disabled toilet and go, fucking hell, that is a weird disability. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bloke, the size of his head, how does he live with it? I love that you also put in a little nod for Josh in your clue. Yeah, you got well. to be a clue. Yeah, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> what did I say? A witty. A witty. Witty. Is it OK to start celebrating now? Do you know what annoys me about that? What? There's literally a comb yep. with Widdy on it, yep. and none of those fucking judges got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my name! <laughs> oh, no, I... the clue wasn't... That, that wasn't the clue. The clue was me doing your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I, I think it's very impressive that you can do that voice. In fact, can you, can you do it now? Do you want me to... Do you want me to... Hello, it's just waking up! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough of the voice. <laughs> um, I also love, like, how did your kids respond to it? Oh, they loved it. They, that's why I did it, is because I thought they'd, they'd love it. They were losing their minds when I got a mask. Have, have a little look. It's not bad, eh? <laughs> Wasn't just you I lied to. No. But they want me to wear it on the school run. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's hard enough driving with my hands and feet. Like... <laughs> so it's literally, literally two seconds before the reveal yeah. and you're still lying to your kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not going to tell the fucking Daily Mirror. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> also, now you've made... Singer, do you think you'll be able to afford a sofa? <laughs> oh, that was at my mum's house. <laughs> <laughs> and so there were oh, loads there were so many there were so many theories about yeah, there were yeah. theories about who it could be. Yeah. So my favourite one. I'd say was... all of the theories were it's Alex well, Brooker. Not all of them. One of them was David Seaman. It's like very that was opposite. you that tweeted that out. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is, so there were also theories about why it might not be me, like yeah. clues and stuff like that. This is my favourite one yep. of all of them. Have a look at this. Uh, this guy said, they're all saying Bigfoot is Alex Brooker. I noticed that both hands on the character are moving, and Alex, bless him, only has one fully formed arm. <laughs> 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 I want him to do the pip assessments. He'd be great, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, so, uh, I'm going to write down, you have no legs. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of people tweeted saying, is Alex now the singer on the show as, instead of Adam? And do you know what? Yes, we're going to end the show tonight oh. with a bit of a party for Alex. He's going to premiere a new single with a surprise guest duet. Oh. And just like The Masked Singer, we're going to be playing clues throughout the show to keep everyone guessing as to who it is. We also want to celebrate what we think should be an Alex Brooker album. Ooh. Oh, yes. I think it's time. So our poll for tonight is, what should Alex's album be called? <laughs> Dark Side of the Weatherspoon, uh, <laughs> Alex Brooker's Greatest Bits, <laughs> Looks Like a Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some. Yeah, I've go. Got... Jagged Little Lag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, never mind the bollocks. Check out the hands. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe full of hollow. And original pirate material. <laughs> oh, I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that far. I just put the word not, so I had not born to run and not the best of steps. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're going to celebrate with a party at the end of the show. Message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag Alex and Album Party. <laughs> uh, and I'm... Do you know... I'm going to say this, though. I'm a bit jealous, cos you've been doing all the things that I like to do. You've been singing on TV shows, you're going to close the show tonight. Should have seen Bigfoot playing rugby league, mate. Bloody love <laughs> <up there. laughs> So, last weekend, I went out and did all the things you like to do. Oh, God, this is going to be... I went to an Arsenal game with Howie from the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, in fact, if you don't believe me, he sent me this message the next day. Hey, Adam. Dude, thanks for the great weekend. I can't believe how many froses we drank in the Arsenal box. 
It's a shame Alex was too busy. Anyway, see you next time, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you got a message off of Howie from the Backstreet Boys. Yeah. <laughs> this has been the best week of my career and it's now ruined. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can send us any question you want us to answer tonight at the last week. Use the hashtag, is it OK? For example, Tracy said, is it OK that Alex Brooker lied to his mum last week about Ooh. being Bigfoot? Yes, amongst everyone else, he lied to his mum, who Ooh. is here tonight in the audience. So, Alex, what would you like to say to her? Uh, all right, Mum. Um... <laughs> <laughs> look at your... Look at your little funny eggs. Um... No, I'm, I am sorry. I am sorry for, for, for the lies. I'm sorry for, for that. But I'm not sorry, really, because what happened, you slid into Josh's DMs. So I think I deserve an apology. <laughs> As we found out last week, haven't you? You've been messaging each other. Well, he didn't, she didn't slide into my DMs. She was more than welcome into my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, you got anything to say about it? I think you're out of order. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I tell you I what, mate, someone know. needs an ice pack now, you're sweating. Yeah. <laughs> you're I not going to take my leg you. off me again like you did with me when I was a kid, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no I... tell you, no leg for a week for you. <laughs> You mean, just to check, you mean prosthetic leg? That, is, <laughs> that isn't how this started. I right. haven't forgiven you. But you are proud of me a little I bit. I knew though, it. Oh, bloody hell, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, so but easy to win her back. I knew from week one. Yeah. You did. Never and wiggled I'm the fingers, so angry mum. because you wouldn't tell me. Oh. Oh. And to make it worse, on the final, I wasn't even allowed to watch it because I had your children. <laughs> <laughs> was I had to turn all social media off for four and a half hours, which I've never done ever. <laughs> I know, I know. So you weren't replying to my DMs. I was Tinker... living. <laughs> <laughs> we right. watched Tinkerbell. <laughs> What's that? We watched Tinkerbell. Great film, Mark. Great film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for looking after the girls while I went out. Anyway, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need, we need to get into the big story of the week. Oh, well, she's got security with her now, look. <laughs> <laughs> big story of the week. Uh, Peter said, is it OK if you can explain what the Seven Hells happened in Parliament on Wednesday? And look, to be honest, Peter, Seven Hells doesn't, doesn't begin to describe it. In fact, there are now rumours that Hamas have called for a ceasefire in Westminster. <laughs> Here is the unedifying video of how it unfolded this week. I think it's important on this occasion that the House is able to consider the widest possible range of options. We decided to select the amendments both in the name of the Prime Minister and in the name of the Leader of the Opposition. in private. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Oh. Is that OK? Well, I think, obviously, we're overlooking one main thing, which is obviously Lindsay Hoyle, the speaker, when he gets really stressed, turns into a woman. <laughs> <laughs> These people are meant to be running the country and they are behaving like the kind of people that wouldn't be allowed on an easy jet flight. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Murdoch said, is it OK that MPs acted like petulant children? That's basically what happened. And, in fact, that's how we're going to try and describe it to you tonight. Now, the whole thing started with something called Opposition Day, which is when one of the opposition parties gets to set the agenda. I didn't even know Opposition Day was a thing. No, I can't see it becoming a big thing. I can't see it becoming like Valentine's Day. <laughs> a range of cards at Moonpig. Roses are red, violets are blue. What do you think of this motion I've tabled for you? <laughs> <laughs> so on Wednesday, it was the Scottish National Party's turn at Opposition Day, and this is where it started to get childish. The only way I can explain it is like this. Now, the SNP tabled a motion calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and an end to the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. But they didn't mention the actions of Hamas, which some people interpreted as accusing Israel of war crimes. 
Many people suggested the SNP chose that wording because they hoped it might cause a split in the Labor Party and put Keir Starmer in an embarrassing situation. Now, some could say they were being a little bit cheeky. <laughs> Keir Starmer then asked the Speaker of the House if Labor could introduce an amendment that referenced Hamas and was less explicit about Israel. Now, normally the SNP, whose opposition day it was, would be allowed to introduce their motion first. But against convention, Lindsay Hoyle allowed the Labor motion to go forward first this gave Labor MPs a chance to vote for the wording they agreed with and was seen as a massive breaking of parliamentary precedent. The Tories had already introduced their own amendment, which meant there were now three different proposals on the table. Now, because the Speaker is a former Labor MP, there were accusations that he and Keir Starmer were working together to make a mess of parliamentary procedure. Although Starmer and Hoyle denied any collusion, the Tories and the SNP threw their toys out of the pram and many of them stormed out of Parliament completely. <laughs> This meant that Labor's amendment passed because there was no one there to vote against it, while the SNP's motion didn't even get heard. And so what was reported as the SNP, hoping to embarrass Labor, ended up backfiring all over their faces. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, none of this changes anything for the people they were supposed to be helping, the children of Gaza. Look, no matter what side of politics you're on or what you think about what's going on in the, in the Middle East, I think we can all agree that every single Member of Parliament should be fucking ashamed of what went on this week. Because here are the statistics. Since the Hamas attacks on October 7 that killed over 1,200 people, the Ministry of Health in Gaza has reported 30,000 deaths. And according to Save the Children, over 12,000 of those deaths have been children. Meanwhile, around 130 Israeli hostages are still unaccounted for, including a boy who was 10 months old when he was taken, along with his four-year-old brother. No child deserves to be bombed, and no child deserves to be celebrating their first birthday while being held hostage. Lads, do you think anyone on the ground in Gaza gives a flying frog's fat ass about what went on in, what went on in Parliament this week? I'm going to say no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, just, I, I just think that there's been... It, it's, it was incredible just watching it, just watching them, them, them act, act like just spoiled children in there on Wednesday. And there's been a lot of, lot of uh, debate about MP safety. And mm -hmm. rightly so. Yep. You know, and, and rightly so. Distracted from the larger debate, the, the, the really important debate, yeah. which is children's safety. Yeah. And, and that, to me, is, you know, the, the most important thing here. I've got to dis... No, I'm not true. I, 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 I totally agree. It's just... It was grim. It was... Because the, the whole thing was party politics at the end of the day. Yeah. It was obviously... There was lots of speeches that were about Gaza and there are MPs that all care heavily about Gaza. But at the end of the day, the whole thing became a game of party politics. At the end of the day, it was about a general election that's coming up. Yeah. And look, Lindsay Hoyle gave an unprecedented apology this week. It is worth note noting, Conservative MPs like Penny Morden and Mark Francois backed Lindsay Hoyle, as did Jacob Rees-Mogg. That, oh. that, that is when he apologised. <laughs> Lindsay Hoyle went, Mogg's, Mogg's backing me. I've fucked it. <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg felt sorry for him. Yeah. What's he been visited by three ghosts in the night? <laughs> <laughs> What's he going to be doing this week? Helping an old lady across the road? <laughs> Even Prince William spoke up this week, calling for an end to the fighting as soon as possible, and he said that too many people have been killed. The problem there comes to Prince Harry, who's going to have to, as a matter of policy, disagree with Prince William. <laughs> <laughs> William was immediately criticised by Nigel Farage, who said the prince should, quote, stick to the BAFTAs. That's right, the GB News presenter and gin salesman who swallowed a camel's testicle on I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, is telling <laughs> someone else to stick to their lane. <laughs> Why is, yeah. why is he telling him stick to the BAFTAs? Like, that's not his job. He's not the Prince of Cineworld. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's not like the BAFTAs are completely devoid of politics anyway. The best picture was Oppenheimer. The BAFTA for best documentary was won by a film about the war in Ukraine. And the best British film was a movie about the Nazis. I think Nigel Farage should stick to being a frog-faced arsehat. <laughs> <laughs> And like, well, what been what been you say, oh, hmm? A lot of frog references from you today, isn't there? there? Are a lot of frog references. Have you just had a like a pond put in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you know what's happened. He signed up to be frog on next year's Masked Singer. <laughs> 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 Look, it has been a pretty serious start to the show tonight, and normally we'd try and find some light in the big story, but. It, it just doesn't feel right to try and find something funny in the situation in Gaza. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a leaf out of the One Show's book and we're going to talk about something completely different to change the mood in the room. 
Up next, we've got a charming video of an Irish dad being enclosed in a giant balloon. <laughs> hey guys, come with me as I shove my father into a balloon. Go! Get in there! Step one, come please. Easy, easy, you dog rough. Do you know how my big reaches? It's almost cleared the air, but it still hasn't quite done it, so we need to go bigger than the one show. So would you please welcome the Change the Subject Dancer! He's on the road to Hollywood. She's too hot to handle. Please welcome Jonathan Ross and Desiree Byrne. <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. Ah. All right, Jonathan, what are your thoughts on what happened in Parliament this week? Uh, you know, I thought it was an inedifying mess, and it's so awful, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure there must be a handful of people in there with, with principles, yep. but the majority of them, you can't ever think the whole system needs to be changed. Yep. It's just not productive, the way they sort of, like, supposedly debate when it isn't a debate. And you're right, the sort of party political aspect of it, frankly, very disturbing. But I thought I was on here to talk about Mars Singer. <laughs> you, <laughs> Word. I mean, we are going to get to that. Word. Desiree, would you, what would you rather talk? Do you want to do politics or Marcia? I mean, I, at, yeah, it is both confusing entirely to me because essentially when I watch British politics, I'm like, so they just cram them all in a room and yell. Like, yeah. it feels like kids got dropped off at boarding school and no one came to pick them up and they just grew up, <laughs> created a government yeah. and are still arguing with each other. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm appalled, I think. I'm still trying to decipher what happened. Desiree, okay. if only we had a system like a America. <laughs> yes. Yes. Any reality TV star could be your next leader. All right. So let's talk about the Masked Singer. Jonathan, were you... How the fuck did you get through to the final? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> oh, I mean, my God. Oh. Nothing gets it was you. I thought it'd be out any minute. No, you kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and even I told your mum it was you. I was honest. <laughs> Come on, you, Alec. <laughs> <laughs> Your face is so when I'd go for it, was I? I know, what I know. Was I, well, to this literally, guy? I mean, I reach at all. She hasn't got a poker face at all. And like, he gets through and she'll come and go, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're to be partial. But you know why he got through, of course, because we love him because he's charming and he's funny and the costume was great as well. And he came out and he made the crowd happy and he made them laugh and he did a great performance. So it isn't really a, a singing competition, obviously. Like, <laughs> It's an entertainment wow. show, and you were very, very entertaining. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I've gone through doing all sorts of guesses. I didn't get the A Witty uh, guess because um, number one, I thought it was Anne Whittacombe in the suit. Right? Uh... And number two, why would you mention Josh on a primetime show when no one knows who he is? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get that clue? I want you to get that clue. <laughs> Josh's mum phoned me after and said, it doesn't mean Josh, does he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, is this a roast? <laughs> <laughs> Would you do the mass Singer? I mean, uh, look, I find singing in public daunting, but, like, in America, you know, we have heady hitters. Like, you know, Rudy Giuliani did it. Sarah oh, yeah, Palin yeah. did it. So, you know, I'm not a disgraced politician. What do I have to offer? <laughs> uh, but, uh, I mean, it seems like it's uh, super fun, and now that I know that you've done it, yeah. I've heard <laughs> it. <laughs> so Alex is going to end the show by premiering his new music video with a very special guest. We're giving you clues as to who that guest is throughout the show. Are you ready for your first one? Please. OK, uh, here's your first clue. I love playing tennis. 
Was it in or out? Game Dragon. Game Dragon. Who do you think? John McEnroe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're going to have a very disappointing end to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you match the rest of my life. <laughs> That's right. I, I mean, Andy Murray? Maybe? Don't right. you think? You've got to set your sights lower. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's all that's like to move after the break. Uh, we're going to defend ourselves against a crazy SOB and we want to know what should Alex's album be called? Message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag Alex and Album Party. We'll see you soon. Time to welcome another guest now. He's the happy Mundo who caused controversy on TFI Friday. Please welcome Sean Ryder. Uh, very excited to have you on the show. Very uh -huh. excited. Happy Mondays are back out on tour. Yeah, we are, yeah. They've been there, done that, so, yeah. <laughs> when, when is it kicking off? Next month, but don't ask me what date. I know it's next month. <laughs> <laughs> and, look, it's an interesting thing having you on the last league, because you were banned from Channel 4 or from live TV on Channel 4... Yeah. ..for swearing on TFI Friday. Now, we've it's got... 30 years ago, yeah. We've got the clip. This is the clip uh, when uh, Chris Evans uh, dared you not to swear. Well, look, I, 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 let me tell you this. If you don't swear tonight, I'll give you my shoes. That's good. Right. <laughs> what have you got to ask yourself is, would you like these shoes? Uh, I'd find somewhere to wear them, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, hang on. <laughs> Patrick Cox, man, and Patrick's the fucking good... Uh... <laughs> uh, I should have been banned for that tap. <laughs> the moustache. Come on. <laughs> Um, well, I tell you what, I'm going to do a similar thing tonight. If you can get what, through... What, you're going to grow a tash? <laughs> <laughs> if you can get through the show without swearing, you can have my leg. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> That's a beauty. Yeah. That's top of the line, that is. That is. What a twat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. oh, let's have a look at the poster. We've got the poster for the Happy Mondays tour as well. There you go. Um, now, get, let's get back to world news. Jamie said, is it OK that, once again, an outspoken critic of Putin has had a mysterious fatal accident in prison? Now, last week, the former Russian opposition leader, Alexei Navalny, who had been sent to a prison above the Arctic Circle, died suddenly at the age of 47. Now, Navalny's mother was told he died from something called sudden death syndrome. His wife claims he was poisoned with Novichok, and authorities are now saying it was natural causes. But... <laughs> After using my detective work last week to predictly, co correctly predict that Alex Brooker was Bigfoot on The Masked Singer, I've been up all night carefully piecing together what I think happened to Alexei Navalny. <laughs> By the way... Great detective work also. That was a miracle how you walked over there when you'd just given your leg back. <laughs> <laughs> I put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> Have Look. you stolen a man's leg? <laughs> 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 the kind is... Yeah, I'm the other... I'm the other mass singer. I'm extra foot. <laughs> uh, the kindest possible scenario is that Navalny died from being sent to a prison above the Arctic Circle, which was also Putin's doing. Joe Biden this week called Vladimir Putin and, I quote, a crazy SOB. Uh, the Kremlin responded by calling Biden a poor attempt at a Hollywood cowboy. That is the worst roast battle ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thoughts on Putin and all of that? But the thing, well, I just think the thing with Biden, you yeah. know, they say he called Putin a crazy SOB, but with the way Biden is at the moment, you know, what he says Putin, but what he means is Larry from the canteen. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's so funny, that whole, like, oh, Hollywood cowboy, like, it's not a diss. And also, like, every old white guy who squints is not Clint Eastwood. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, like, such a, it's such a dad diss. It's like, oh, you must be Hollywood cowboy, like you rap star, like Vanilla Spice. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you scared about Vladimir Putin? Are you worried about I'm him? I'm not scared, but, I mean, I don't wish ill on anyone much, but... The world is going to be a slightly better place the minute he dies, and let's hope that's quite soon. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just 
say. <sighs> Maybe it's the Australian in me, but the way you said it on a swivelling chair, you sounded like a Bond villain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr Putin, I expect you to die. <laughs> <laughs> But meanwhile, this week, Donald Trump managed to mix up the dates of an upcoming election and made an unexpected stop at a sneaker convention in Pennsylvania to unveil his first ever trainer. This is the new Donald Trump gold trainer. Any takers? I believe they're called sleazies. <laughs> Come on, jo Jonathan, you've got to be tempted, right? Well, no, if it didn't have the T on the <laughs> side, I would buy a pair. <laughs> oh. That's a smart-looking shoe. That is you'd exactly wear, the... you? Well, you'd wear it, wouldn't you? Well, just, <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with these? I mean, they're great they're converse. Um, they're, 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 they're I made fun. a mistake wearing these. I didn't realise they've got an extra half inch for some reason. I've got no idea why. And when I was driving earlier, I kept getting stuck on the pedal. <laughs> 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 uh, just like Trump, the shoes are strangely gaudy, a ridiculous colour, and they have no soul. <laughs> And look, while we're talking I'm about... fucking great, John. <laughs> 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 while we're talking about unhinged former leaders, Gareth said, not so much is it OK, more like is Liz Truss OK? Yes, the woman who ran the country for 45 days before tanking the economy is now telling Republicans in America she was brought down by the deep state. Here she is with the human representation of Bile, Steve Bannon, parroting every talking point ever raised by a right-wing nutjob. Look, I wanted to cut taxes, I wanted to cut the size of the administrative state, and those people didn't like it. The economic establishment in Britain wanted to keep things the way they were, and they did. They got me. But I have learned from that, Steve. You did. I've hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was it The Economist that got you? Was it the Financial Times of London? Are these the people we got? This they're, is the party at the, the, the city the, of London. These, are they the ones that run the deal these, over there? These, these are the friends of the bureaucratic establishment. They are the friends of the deep state. And they work together with bureaucrats, of which we've got many more in Britain than you have here in the United States, to keep things the same. And people in Britain aren't happy about that. They want change, but it's being stopped. And that's why we need a bigger bazooka. Fucking you. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> she says that, like, there, it's like basically insinuating that the problem here is, like, we, we, people didn't like her change. Mm. They didn't like the change that she made. But it's not like when Opal Fruits changed to Starburst. What we didn't like is that she turned 30 billion yeah. into zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I love how hilarious she's talking about coming into America with a bigger bazooka. Like, babe, you need to start with a 22. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, she's kind of running up against all of our crazy blonde Republican pundits, like Ann Coulter, Carrie Ann, Kellyanne Conway, like people like that. You know, she's going to have to up her crazy game to start talking about, you know, space lasers, critical race theory, lost the 830 mm -hmm. building. You know, like Hillary Clinton's emails, that's where the billions are. You know, she's got to come up with like crazier theories than what she's got if she's going to make it. She's a very poor version of a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, do you want to add to that? I'm still on the fucking space lasers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America. That's what she's trying to do. These were actual things said. It was amazing watching her here in action. I've seen taxi drivers with more nuanced views of politics. <laughs> Do you know what? Liz Truss blamed left-wing organisations for bringing her down, like, and I'm not making this up, the Bank of England. <laughs> you know, that, those bunch of lefties. <laughs> I remember watching Mary Poppins thinking, gee, that dad's a bit of a socialist. <laughs> this is the woman whose mini-budget reportedly cost us £30 billion, and now she's telling Americans she was brought down by bureaucrats. It's like Harold Shipman opening an old folks home in Connecticut and saying he was sabotaged by the woke medical establishment. <laughs> also, if there are, if are any Americans watching, Liz Truss was Prime Minister in the same way that Jade Ewan was a sugar babe. <laughs> <laughs> Too obscure? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, throughout the show, we're giving clues as to who is going to duet with Alex when he premieres his single tonight. Um, Sean, would you ever go on The Masked Singer? You're having a fucking laugh. <laughs> <laughs> He's only involved with it because you fucking money laundering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sean <laughs> told me earlier, I'm he came up to me and said, why are you doing that fucking show? How much fucking money are they paying for that fucking show? And I went, well, yeah, quite well paid. 
I said, would you do it? He went, I want to do it for two million fucking quid. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went, really, you want to do it for two million quid? And then we started having a bet about... I, I shouldn't <laughs> say what the bet was about. <laughs> yeah. But anyway... <laughs> and then I said to him, well, if I won that bet, would you do The Masked Singer? And he went... And then he tried to change the deal of the bet. That's how <laughs> unlikely it is we'll ever see him on The Masked Singer. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I also pointed that he wouldn't need a mask. Well, he looks like he's wearing and, one. And anyway. you won't... <laughs> 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 All right, it's time for our second clue. Here it is. I cannot wait to see this. Ow! Who put those chairs there? That really hurt my knee. Uh, it's not knee. Bez, is it? All right, so whoever is in that <laughs> is going to be singing with Alex at the end of the show. Bez is your guess. Well, I'm just saying it's not Bez, is it? Because I know where he is tonight and he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> for you after the break. We're going to solve a musical mystery and we'll ask Plymouth if they're OK. Plus, we want to know, what should Alex's album be called? Message, message us at the last leg. Use the hashtag Alex and Album Party. We'll see you in a little bit. Your mate, Desiree Birch, Jonathan Ross and Sean Ryder. If anyone was offended by anything uh, Jonathan said in the last part of the show, they are not the views of Channel 4. I should, yeah, I'd like to apologise as well. I wouldn't buy those Trump sneakers. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> uh, oh, Sean, now, we mentioned... I'd we had... buy the fucking Trump sneakers. <laughs> 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 he's a twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd buy them, you know what I mean? If anyone was offended by anything Sean just said... <laughs> Uh, they actually are the views of Channel 4, so you're fine. Um, your other band, Black Grape, uh, released a new album, Orange Head, yeah, last yeah. month. Why is it called Orange Head? Well, have you seen the cover of the album? Yeah. It's a big orange fucking head. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, you know, any sort of teenage girl that's walking around at the moment. <laughs> like one of my kids. <laughs> I want to ask you if I can. I want to ask you about the Gorillaz song, Dare, yeah. with, that you did the vocals for, cos I've heard a rumour about how the... Well, hey, I wrote that, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. Well, he, this is the bit, in case no-one knows the song, this is the banger we're talking no about. No-one knows it. <laughs> yeah, right. blah. Come It's Dare. Oh. So... How did that lyric come about? OK, so we're going back to 2002. Yep. Damon phones me up and says, you come down to London, do some work on this album, do some writing. Yep. 2002, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I'm in receivership for about the seventh year. Yeah. So I'm not really sort of well up on writing. I've got writer's block. Right. You know what I mean? So I go up there and basically he puts a tune on and, uh, and folks be writing. So I put the cans on this uh, and the tune's on and I go, turn it up. And I say, turn it up. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And then I go, it's there. As in text talk, there. You know, there. Yeah. Right? And, and then Damon went, right, do that again, man. And that's the song. <laughs> and, and that was it. <laughs> Gorilla's only number fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back to the news. Phil said, is it OK that the World War II bomb in Plymouth is likely to be more effective than Trident? Yeah, so an operation took place in Plymouth today to move a 500-kilogram bomb that was found in a garden and then dump it in the sea. By the way, Plymouth bomb was a Josh's original Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, cos I've spent, like, the last 15 years arguing that Devon isn't as behind the times yeah. as people say. And now there's a fucking is. World War II <laughs> bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Until the Manx and the Scousers arrived, but it's still a bit behind your time. <laughs> so there was an area cordoned off uh, as a truck took the bomb through the city. Uh, the cheeky cordon looked like this. Um, <laughs> also, by the way, Josh's Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> so they just dumped it in the sea? They dumped it in the sea and then they... <laughs> yep. there's, a, there's a sign on the beach that says, don't litter. And they're like, yeah, we're just... <laughs> 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 Next series of Blue Planet's gonna be mayhem. <laughs> <laughs>
It was ships and they put a bomb in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> we, found, we found Nemo's fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it was revealed on Wednesday this week that a Trident missile misfired and crashed into the sea off the coast of Florida during a test launch earlier this year. This is amazing. According to a, an anonymous source quoted by The Sun, the missile, quote, left the submarine, but it just went plop right next to them. <laughs> you know, Ploppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to panic, though. The sources at the Ministry of Defence insisted that had the test occurred in a real-world situation, uh, it would have worked. Do we feel safe now? <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, they did this off the coast of Florida. It's one thing when you into your own coastline. It's yeah. another thing when you plonk out a jobby next to mine. <laughs> you know what I mean, it just went like, bloop, like into the water, right? That's what they described, plop. Yeah. There only one thing goes plop. We all know what that is. <laughs> well, let's hope the real-world situation never happens, because that's like finishing your driving test by ploughing into an old lady and then going, yeah, but it won't happen in real yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, isn't the main point of Trident, they say, is, as a deterrent, mm -hmm. why are we telling people it doesn't fucking work? <laughs> Just say we tried it, it works. <laughs> what I loved about... What I read this week is that over half our, or half our submarines were built in 1986. Mm -hmm. They've still got tape decks. <laughs> <laughs> and look, before we go to the break, it's, it's time for one last clue as to who's going to end the show by singing a duet with Alex for his music video. Right, this is your final clue. Here it is. Okay. On the weekend, I like going to the movies. If you want to come along, just call me by my number. Any thoughts, Desiree? I have no idea anyone with a phone. <laughs> Is that closer than Andy Murray? They have got a phone. OK, have got great. Phone. <laughs> I, I've got it. Yeah? Sean Wider. No, Barry Manilow. <laughs> Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> You'd say Barry Manilow. No, Barry Norman. Barry Norman. <laughs> Going to the movies. Yeah, he's, he's sadly no longer with <laughs> 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 Is he dead? All right, let's move on. We'll have more last week for you after the break. Yeah. Josh will wrap up the last seven days. We're going to throw what a party for the release of Alex's out. single scene a little bit. <laughs> Jonathan Ross and Sean Ryder. Uh, some of the stories we didn't get to this week. Scientists have announced they have grown artificial testicles in a dish. <laughs> a development they claim could help treat infertility in men. <laughs> Someone just got to a scientist. You need to grow a pair. <laughs> 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 uh, Canterbury Cathedral is facing a backlash after plans to hold a 90s silent disco. Uh, dance moves included big fish, little fish, loaf of bread. Uh, would you... <laughs> and finally, uh, we've landed on the moon again. A private US company combined with NASA to send a phone booth sized craft to the moon. It landed last night and has been described as, quote, upright and starting to send data, which also describes Sean at 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we never <laughs> stop going to the moon. <laughs> <Never. laughs> All right, Josh has been making an amendment to the last seven days. What have you got? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Yep. I haven't got a card. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's just been on his. I've just been told by the producer check. that they're going to text me the clip. Right. But I haven't got my phone on because I'm on live TV. Right. <laughs> okay. Do you want to see a funny clip? Oh, is this the clip about the uh, BBC oh, News presenter? The eager who... weather lady. Yeah, the eager weather lady who slips up on air. Good Here job. It is. The teachers paid attention. Uh... <laughs> well, so thank you very much. Yes. So, what have you got up at the weekend? Anything exciting? Oh, my niece's surprise birthday party. Oh, that's so, lovely. Yeah, so that'll be nice. But not a fun. surprise if she's watching this. Oh, goodness me, I've spoiled. <laughs> 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 All right, we asked you for a name for Alex's uh, album. <laughs> By the way, uh, a lot of people are saying, is it OK Jonathan Ross, Ross is wearing that jacket tonight? Uh, <laughs> which is, oh. I'm not even going to move on. But um, Anne said, how many people are missing the Alex, and, uh, Alex anal bum party joke? <laughs> the hashtag, Alex and album party. Oh! It's Alex anal bum party, like Susan Boyle when she had the Susan... Out. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Alex's album. Stephen said, I'm still standing. Uh, Harmani said, Bigfoot's back. Uh, uh, T. Jones said, Hand and deliver. <laughs> <laughs> Olivier said, Stair lift to heaven. But this one was our favourite. <laughs> Phil said, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Toes Club band. <laughs> oh.
All right, Alex is about to premiere the music video for his new single and reveal his special guest. But before they, we do that, would you please wel uh, thank our guest, welcome our guest, <laughs> thank our guest Desiree Birch, <laughs> Jonathan Ross, <laughs> and the one and only Sean Ryder, <laughs> and my co-host Josh Whittacombe and Alex Brooker. We'll be back next week with comedians Joe Brand and Ishan Akbar. But right now, after his success on The Masked Singer, this is Alex Brooker's new single. Do you want, do you want to introduce it, Alex? Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is me. That's Bigfoot, obviously. Yeah. Singing one and only with a special guest. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Last League. My name's Adam Hills. See you next week for the next league.